afternoon and welcome on this rainy but beautiful day for us. Thank you for joining us on this special celebratory occasion. My name is Kathy McCarthy and I'm a Council on Aging board member, Framingham Senior Heroes team chair, and the 2022 Senior Hero winner for Health and Healthcare. This is our fourth for annual Framingham Senior Heroes Award recognition program. The purpose of this award is to recognize residents that are 60 plus years young and uh, for their contributions to cultivate inclusivity and diversity. Today, we have the honor of recognizing four active senior residents who generously contributed their time and expertise to improve the quality of life for Framingham. Carol Lack, raise your hand. You can all say yes. <laughs> Cynthia Villanueva. Maureen Dickey. And Judy Grove. Our honorees have touched many facets of our city and helped support our diverse community. They engage with children bring various authors and their perspectives to the homes of our residents through Access TV, care for seniors' health and those in need or crisis, provide valuable outreach that promotes better understanding for our LGBTQ plus community, as well as educating and empowering all members of our community to get involved. We are tremendously grateful to our unsung seniors who continue to be the backbone of our community through their unselfish volunteerism. Our FSH program team thanks everyone who submitted nominations, the nominees, all who assisted in our outreach. Thanks to Randy Ellsworth, and the Callahan's center staff, amazing group of wonderful folks. And Mary McGill and our friends of Callahan that keeps us in contact with all the happenings here. And of course, our, <laughs> yes, our Council on Aging and Clot. We appreciate our state senator and state representatives who will present official citations to our winners. We acknowledge the support of our city dignitaries who are present here today. And we'll, you'll be recognized in a moment with Randy. <laughs> At this time, I will introduce the program team members who are all residents of Framingham, and I'm sure you want to join in thanking them. If you could stand up, if you could. Brian Sullivan and wave. Brenda Diaz. Alana Dundon, Robin DeTeo, Bob Evelyn, myself, and a special appreciation to Glenda Thomas, who's right in the back there, who started the program and has provided leadership, guidance, and assistance since the program's inception. Thank you all. Volunteerism brings joy, caring, and hope. And being a person for and with others, no matter our differences, makes our city stronger together. Our senior heroes of 24 inspire us to be proud of being a part of the positive ripple effect of diversity inclusion. While volunteering, we seek opportunities to discover the beauty and benefit of those who may seem different than ourselves but our presence and new friendships remind them of their worth. And one small act for another of kindness could mean the world to them. As Maya Angelou said, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Be inclusive, be a friend, be grateful, reach out and encourage someone, and take time to care and volunteer. 
and thank you all for being here with us. May I introduce Randy, our Director of Elder Services. Hi, everyone. Welcome today. It's great seeing people once again. I see some people here I haven't seen in a long time. And this is wonderful. Uh, every year with this event, the Senior Framingham, uh, Framingham Senior Heroes Award seems to grow in popularity and the attendances. So this is wonderful. Looking at the list of the award recipients, it is quite a lineup. And I, I find myself saying that every year. Uh, it's amazing. I was talking to Brian last night, and he was amazed at the background of all the recipients. And every year there, it's amazing that people put so much time and invest in this community, and it's meant so much. And thank you to Glenda Thomas uh, for coming up with this idea uh, years ago. I think it's wonderful. Uh, on behalf of the Callahan Center, I have to, I'm the director here. Um, every day we are growing. Uh, our attendances are absolutely growing every month. And I think last month, maybe even this month, we even set a record. Uh, so it's wonderful to be reaching out to all of you, to recognizing the people that actually have made our services for our, our older adult population possible and have invested uh, for so long in them. We really appreciate it. Right now, our older adults are about 20,000 people in Framingham, which is close to 28% of the population in Framingham. So it's, yeah, great job to everybody here. And they are the largest group and the fastest growing group in Framingham as well. So they have me coming up today just to make some acknowledgments to uh, some of the folks here in the room today. Um, basically, at the Callahan Center here, everything runs because of the financial support and even the non-financial support of people being here on a regular basis in the center. So I just want to take a moment to go through my list and say thank you. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to the mayor's office, Mayor Charlie Sasitsky. Um, I meet with him and see him on a regular basis. He's been extremely supportive of the center. Uh, the most recent budget, we had a 28% increase in our budget which is really unheard of in a year with budgets. You have to watch everything you spend. He saw the investment was needed here for our older adult population. And I'd like to thank his representatives here in the room here today from the mayor's office for being here as well. Also for our city councilors, um, they likewise are very much involved uh, with the center, not only from a financial perspective, but also coming down here on a regular basis. So I would like to acknowledge some of the city councils that are here in the room. I believe I do see one as I, as I check out the, uh, the crowd here. And the chair of the city council, Phil Ottaviani. And I just want to make sure I haven't missed anyone, which I don't think I have on the city council. But we have many city councils that do come down here on a regular basis, are engaged. Uh, like Councilor Mike Cannon, he attends every uh, Council on Aging board meeting. He's right there, uh, which is wonderful to have that type of engagement on a regular basis. Uh, also, we have in attendance our state representatives. I think they get the award for the best attendance because we have yeah. many of them here uh, today. We're very fortunate. I see Carmine Gentile as well in the yeah. audience. So Carmine, that's great. And um, also to recognize in the crowd, so our state representatives that I see out here, and this is interesting for me to check them all out and find them all. And uh, first of all, I think I've seen Priscilla Sousa is here, state representative Priscilla Sousa. Also state representative Jack Patrick Lewis. And Jack is down here and Priscilla on a regular basis to interact with people, with activities. So they have that ongoing relationship with our center. So thank you to both of them for making that investment in time as well. And Kate Donahue. Yep, and we have State Representative Kate Donahue that's here. Kate, thank you for coming as well. Absolutely, and I think I got everyone here. Wonderful, sounds good, thank you. Uh, also, a gentleman that will be coming back very soon from Senate President uh, Karen Spilka's office. Her representative for Framingham is a very familiar face. Uh, it's Dennis Giambetti. And Dennis will be back very soon. Uh, he had to step out just for a moment, but he'll be right back in. And um, 
also from Congresswoman Catherine Clark's office. Um, we have a representative who I don't see him here today, but I really need to mention him. His name is Jay Higgins. And Jay is here on a monthly basis uh, to meet with our older adult population if there are any issues, any concerns that they do have in their life. And as I mention these folks, I want you to realize these are folks that are here on such a regular basis that you could set up a time, drop in, have a meeting with them every month. And they're scheduled at a regular date and time to come in. So uh, let's give them a nice round of applause. They're very much invested in the Callahan Center, in our population. Also, this particular program, while it was the idea of Glenda Thomas, she was a former member of the Council on Aging Board. Our Council on Aging Board is an 11 member advisory group. They advise me. They say, Randy, think about this. Randy, think about that. And they also advise the mayor as well about anything that they see in the community that can be done better. At one point, we didn't have a transportation program. So they recommended that we look into getting a van with the local transit authority. We did that, and over 9,000 rides later, it has been a very, very successful program. So it's through the Council on Aging Board's recommendations that we make this center much better. And I'd like to take a moment to recognize them. I'd like to start in with the chair of the Council on Aging Board, Clyde Doughton. Also, we have Linda Levitt. We have Jennifer Rich. And make sure also we have Tom Grove, who's here today. Now, Tom's here for two reasons, because he happens to know one of the award recipients. Very smart guy. He married the award recipient years ago, so he had that foresight, you know? To, to, get in there first. And uh, let's see, we also have Brenda Diaz here on the Council on Aging Board. And Kathy McCarthy, right? I hear a little voice going, me too. And Kathy McCarthy. Wonderful. And so thank you to the COA Board. Also the Friends of Callahan are the fundraising group for the Callahan Center. So the money that they raise goes towards the programs and services that we offer. And when we reach out to them, they never say no. So they're always there for us. So I would like to start by introducing the president of the Friends of Callahan, Mary McGill. Yeah. right over there. Also their treasurer, Len Brenner. Marie Gibbons, yeah. Carol Locke, yeah. Yeah. and make sure if I go around, did I skid everyone? Oh, Sheila Watnick, also in the, in the back. And Mary Chapin is here as well. Right. And make sure I got everyone. Did I get everyone in the group here? Looks like I got everyone in your group. Okay, wonderful. So thank you to the Friends of Callahan Board. A lot of the, um, the funding, for example, if we have a guest speaker, um, sometimes someone uh, that comes in, they will help sponsor that. So that's wonderful. Now the Friends of Callahan also have helped us out with today's event. Uh, so the refreshments we see out there, uh, our photographer behind us, um, it, all is because of the Friends of Callahan, the awards as well. So thank you to the Friends. Also, I wanted to take a moment to say thank you to the Callahan Center staff. Uh, while we've been growing very fast in the past year, um, that staff has been able to keep up with that growth and they've been wonderful. So uh, a lot of them are out there working, in fact, right now. Uh, I see Roberta Ho that's currently here. Um, I also want to take a moment to recognize a person who's a major player in making this happen today is Terry Shea. Yeah. And, and Terry has worked on a lot of the arrangements here. Also Lisa Yush Kernis, uh, Cheryl Lavalli as well, our social workers. Uh, we have an administrative assistant, Kelly Lenevsky, who does all the behind the scenes work. So Kelly, thank you so much for that. And uh, it's a wonderful staff, so as you probably leave today, you'll see many of them out there. So I want to thank everyone on the staff as well, okay? And uh, so 
I'm done with my acknowledgments. I think I got in just about everybody. If I didn't, please raise your hand. And oh, also, I want to recommend, uh, also uh, recognize Jim Snyder, our Director of Parks and Recreation and Cultural Affairs. Our particular department falls all underneath the, uh, all within the um, Parks and Recreation and Cultural Affairs Division. And I see Ginger Esty here as well. This is yeah. pleasant, yes. The great scene, Ginger, who has been very much involved with uh, Framingham over the decades. So thank you so much to everyone. And I will now turn it over to Kathy for the, the next portion of the program. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you all. Um, so we have our state reps here. Uh, Dennis will be back, but they're going to they're going to read the citations and say a couple of sentences. Basically, when you present when you present the award to various people that you're assigned, you can see. <laughs> okay. And I hope you all have seen the booklet. I want to say special thanks to Brenda Diaz who with her expertise in graphics and, and leading us on, it's a beautiful booklet and read everybody's bios too. Amazing background. Um, so um, why don't you start with reading uh, Karen's? Perfect. Okay. She knows us so well, a couple of sentences. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, first, I... Dennis, it's so great to see everyone. Uh, I also want to bring greetings from Danielle Gregoire. Uh, if you live in the northwest, northwest corner of Framingham, Danielle's your state rep. Uh, she wasn't able to make it. Uh, Dennis Giambetti will be back very soon. Uh, he was called away on grandpa duty, something that maybe you're also familiar with on occasion, uh, but will be coming back. And I wanted to bring greetings from the Senate President, Karen Spilka. Uh, this is Senate Budget Week, and so these are the longest days of the year for her, uh, and so she is in, in Boston uh, fighting the good fight. Uh, I just want to say congratulations to everyone. Uh, it's so great to see everyone. M many of you are not strangers to the Callahan Center, uh, but if you're not here every day of the week, I invite you to grab Terry and look at a calendar, uh, because there really are events for everyone. Uh, I haven't been to bingo in a while, but it it's... It's happened. Uh, and Mondays, almost every Monday from 2 to 3.30, uh, you can see at least one of our award winners, Carol, uh, and me playing chair volleyball. Uh, yes. So please, uh, there's always a couple of seats, and I'm always happy to sit out uh, for a round or two. Uh, so I have an official Senate citation. Uh, I will read it. It more or less is identical for all of you, uh, but when we've read it four times in the past, uh, it's got a little redundant. So um, know that they're almost identical. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts State Senate official citation. Be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to your names in recognition of receiving the 2024 Senior Heroes, and then this is specific to you, Inclusivity and Diversity Award uh, in Culture and Arts from the Framingham Council on Aging and be it hereby known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its very best wishes for continued success, that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate, uh, signed by our local State Senator Karen Spilka, uh, the Clerk of the Senate, our Senate President, also Karen Spilka, dated today, May 23rd, 2024. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It truly is an honor to be here. Um, so I will read the house citation and I will use this opportunity to reinforce the invite to come back to bingo. It's still pretty hopping. Um, I, uh, I'll have to try chair volleyball though. I haven't done that. Um, so this is our house citation from all of us. And it says the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the House of Representatives, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to fill in the blank. Uh, in recognition of receiving the Framingham 2024 Senior Heroes Award for enriching our community related to, fill in the blank with the award, um, the entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future and good fortune and continued success in all its endeavors. Given this, the 23rd day of May uh, 2024 at the State 
none of the state house here, um, and signed by the Speaker of the House, Ronald Mariano, as well as um, all of us state representatives <coughs> that um, composed the Framingham House delegation. Thank you so much. And you want us over here? Uh, yeah. Okay. With your... Oh, with the citations. With the citations. Yes. Whatever We're going through there. <laughs> so, my, may I ask our first honoree, Carol Lack, to come up? No. I'm going to give her, she's going to hold while I speak. Okay. Ready? Carol Lack is our 2024 Framium Senior Hero in the category of Culture and Arts. It's my pleasure, privilege, and honor to introduce her to you today for her volunteer service, outreach, and inclusion of all voices to be recognized and heard. Carol is a humble and joyful person who has quite a, an accomplished background and career that has enhanced her appreciation of various perspectives in her life. Carol's volunteerism includes Framingham History Center's third grade programs on the Nip Bucks, local authors of color featured in her Access Framingham TV show, Callahan Center's book discussion group, Latino Americano group, as well as being our very own Friends of Callahan, Sunshine Lady. <laughs> Carol's an avid helper and a persistent listener. As folks get involved, she encourages them to consider opportunities for good, understand others' paths, and make each other's journey easier. She draws folks of differing backgrounds, ages, cultures, and abilities to share understand and value diversity in our city. While connecting with others, Carol instills a unifying sense of welcoming and belonging for all. She guides us by example that through kindness, tolerance, and common ground, we appreciate our differences as strengths to benefit and uplift us all. Thank you so much, Carol. And I'll just want to say a few words about Yes. I know I mentioned volleyball before, but if you haven't seen her play volleyball, it is intense. Uh, Carol is one of the constituents that I've got to know initially through like emails and messages. Uh, as somebody who would advocate for things that were also very close to my heart. And so before I knew your love of volleyball and read your larger bio, which if folks haven't read the program book, read every single word about these four remarkable women. Uh, but it is an honor to spend so much time with you and to get to know you. Uh, and I look forward to our next chat and our next game. So. <laughs> Jack says wonderful things about you, and he was telling me just how much fun the cheer volleyball is. I'm You're coming. not quite sure oh, about it. <laughs> yeah. It's on. But um, I will just say briefly, um, I'm the most senior. I'm the only senior citizen of the delegation right now, so um, I'm one of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. And I'm sure you all want to take a take a picture with no over there okay. with the flag over there with the now that we get through one everybody will know the system <laughs> thank you so much and you can come up later when we finish and we want your family and friends to be with you. Hmm? Yes. 
Carol. Okay. Can you all hear me? Yes. Ah, okay. Um, first of all, thank you all for coming and sharing this celebration with us. I especially want to thank the Council on Aging and all the Callahan staff who worked so hard on this event. It's really special to have something positive in this tumultuous world today. It reminds me of Mr. Rogers, who always said that in the midst of catastrophes and terrible things that happen, we must look for the helpers. It's a real honor to be considered as one of those helpers in this community, along with my other three caring awardees. Through the years, I had many wonderful and inspiring teachers, mentors, colleagues, and friends. And I've learned much from many of you. Ellen, my colleague and teacher at Hemingway for many years, um, came up here from Walthall this morning. Um, Josh Brogadier, Francesca, and Nick tutored me in the workings of TV production. And I just love them. Um, I also would like to mention my dear friend, Holly, We've known each other for 50 years. We worked in labs together and also bowled together. Um, we won't talk about <laughs> the lack of trophies. <laughs> um, and uh, our, of course, Mary, uh, who nominated me, I think, um, our friends of Callahan's fearless leader, and she's always pushing me to use all my talents. My wonderful daughter, who came down from New Hampshire by surprise just this morning. Lisa, so glad you're here. And um, of course, most important, my husband, Ben, who gives me the freedom and encouragement and support to jump out of my comfort zone and pursue my latest fun adventure. And you never know what that's going to be. <laughs> but really, I'm just an ordinary person who was born into good circumstances. My Polish immigrant father valued education more than anything, and my beautiful Irish mother always had a smile for everyone. When I was small, all they could afford to rent was a tiny bungalow without running water. I had no choice in my socioeconomic level, my ethnic background, the color of my skin, or the place where I was born. For the record, it was Little Rock, Arkansas. But to quote my Nipmuc friend, Larry Spotted Crow Man, we do have a choice in how we interact with one another. And one of my most memorable experiences through the many years I've been around um, was when I was at a scientific conference workshop in Colorado with about 60 participants, uh, geeky scientists from all over the world. <laughs> and on the third day of the two weeks, we escaped the labs and conference rooms and hiked up one of the nearby mountains, Maroon Bells. Mm -hmm. Yes, a bunch of geeky scientists. Um, only a few even had hiking boots. The rest of us wore sneakers. And as we started climbing, oh, there were gorgeous flowers and snow, even though it was 70 degrees. This long trek included flat grassy patches and many steep slopes, slippery with gravel. When someone was struggling to get their footing, it seemed another scientist hiker was there to help them with a helping hand. And no one cared what color the hand was or where the person was from. It was always welcome. And later along the trail, that person, and often others, were in need of a helping hand and we were all eager to reach out and be there for one another. This incredibly wonderful experience occurred more than 50 years ago. Yet that feeling stays with me as if it was yesterday. It was the kind of journey everyone on this earth should have been part of. It gave a true understanding of our connectedness and how we are all on this crazy trip called life together. At times it's easy, fun, and enjoyable, and other times it can be terribly difficult. But helping one another is what it's really all about. We are not here to spread hatred, to make comparisons, or to pass judgment, but to reach out and simply be kind. Thank you. Thank you. 
my dear Cynthia Villanueva is next. Come on up and join us. Brian, I'll ask one of our team members, Brian, who's going to introduce her. Cynthia Villanueva is the recipient of the Framingham Senior Heroes Award in the area of social development. For over two decades, Cynthia served Framingham's diverse youth as a bilingual educator in the Framingham school system. But it's her extraordinary volunteer efforts outside the classroom where she advocated for diversity and inclusivity that we are recognizing her for today. For many years, she was a volunteer liaison to Spanish-speaking families with children in the school's ESL program. She helped give those families a voice especially those whose children were bullied due to their race or their immigration status, even up to the point of connecting them to the Office of Civil Rights. Cynthia and a colleague applied for grants and solicited donations for computers for impoverished immigrant families in town. And during COVID, she volunteered by reaching out to hundreds of non-English speaking families, making sure they had food as well as medical information. Cynthia has also made significant contributions in support of the LGBTQ student community. She pushed for the school system to officially recognize LGBTQ History Month, leading to Framingham being one of the first communities in the country to do so. Working with the Gender and Sexuality Alliance at the high school, she advocated for the rainbow flag to be flown at all Framingham public schools during Pride Month. And she helped fundraise for the purchase of LGBTQ books that were donated to each of the Framingham school libraries. She was also a strong advocate for a non-binary restroom at Framingham High. Some of her other acts of volunteerism included teaching English at a lo local shelter, coaching youth soccer, being a CCD teacher, working without Metro West to sponsor their trivia night. I could go on, but that's a quick list. All this is why we found Cynthia to be a worthy recipient of this year's Senior Year Award in the area of social development. Congratulations, Cynthia, well-deserved. Give her a hand, folks. And uh, Carmen Gentile, if you could actually come up as well. Carmen, uh, state rep for Sudbury, uh, used to be uh, Cynthia's state rep. And Carmen yeah. loves Framingham so much, but also misses his constituents so much. So get up here, especially for this photo. Um, Maybe he can say something. Oh, I, I, I wasn't going to speak, but I have so much to say about you. Oh. <laughs> I have known Cynthia probably longer than almost anyone else in Massachusetts, because when I moved here 14 years ago, uh, we connected over the GSA at the high school, uh, and it has been it has been an honor to get to know you. But uh, yeah, hold it there because I don't want to share too much. Um, we're we're being videotaped, but yes. come over here. For, yeah, yes. let's get a photo. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, Carmen, yeah. Yeah. Carmen and, and Kate. Well, well, thank you, Jack. I, I've known Cynthia for decades, so uh, this is this is especially meaningful for me and for Cynthia's family, uh, her daughter. Stephanie's with us today, and uh, wonderful person, very giving, loving, and uh, uh, congratulations. Couldn't thank you. Yes. Okay. No, I have a few words. Oh, first. Yeah. Somebody took my glasses. No, that's okay. I have to have them anyway, but we'll see how this works. Um, I'd like to start by thanking maybe Adam Steiner for nominating me for this award and Brian Sullivan for helping me every step of the way because I was so nervous. And I'd like to thank everyone, including the Senior Center and the people who have come out to celebrate with us and my friends who have come to celebrate me. Um, Jack, for having worked so many years with me to help the kids at the school, and my personal friends who have come, and especially my daughter who flew across the Atlantic to be here with me today. Yes. And 
my son and her husband, my son-in-law who are on Zoom, and my very special friend who's like a mother to me, Ginger Esty. Yes. In considering what I was going to say today, I thought of my mother. Like all parents of people who are my age, are those mine? <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to raise this to a little bit. Um, my parents grew up during the Great Depression. My mother came from a poor family of seven children, and I remember her talking about what a treat it was when her father would bring home butter. And they would pick garlic out of the garden and put it on buttered bread. And what a great memory that was. She could put a positive twist on anything. Um, but she also tied that to how fortunate we were when we were growing up and how we shouldn't waste and how we should always help others. Everyone was always invited to sit at our table. When she brought us snacks, she always brought enough for the neighborhood and pushed us to share them with our friends. She taught us to defend those who were ridiculed or mocked just because they were different and not to judge someone because of their differences. She taught us to help those who didn't have a voice and we'd hear her say over and over again, do unto others as you would have others do unto you until it was naturally imprinted on our brains. She instilled in us that treating others with kindness is not a special trait but a normal human quality. We live in a world where contempt for and intolerance of those who are different seems to be the norm. These feelings perhaps derive from fear, but that doesn't make them right. In the work that I've done with our youth, two groups come to my mind. Our friends and family members who identify as LGBTQ and our immigrant population, both of whom I worked with for decades. Think for a moment of what it's like to live in fear of being harmed or having a family member harmed, not having the essentials in life like food and shelter, having to walk over 3,000 miles to escape and to find safety. Think for a moment not having the same basic rights that others enjoy. We need to always be a friend, extend a hand, give food to the hungry, and defend the rights that all humans deserve, especially with our youth. We need to pay it forward and teach them how to pay it forward. One of my favorite classes to teach um, in school that I created was urban ecology. And part of that curriculum was healthy city planning. City planning is based on what's called the triple bottom line. And you portray that with a circle. And the circle has three equal parts, the economy, the ecology, and what's social, helping others. If one of those parts is bigger or smaller than the other, the city fails. Caring, I believe that our lives are based on this type of triple bottom line also. Caring for ourselves and our families, caring for our earth, and being in service to others. I'd like to end by reminding those who are my age and older who remember watching TV with only three stations and rabbit ear antennas at the end of the day, right before the stations would stop broadcasting all night and go dark, the TV would go off and the screen would fill with static, but not before we would hear the national anthem, and at least where I'm from, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. And I just want to steal a few lines from that, and that is, where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's despair, hope. And where there's darkness, light. Where there's sadness, joy. And then it goes on to say that I may not seek as to be, to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. And then my favorite line, for it is in giving that we receive. And I know for me, it was the little things that people did for me that I carry in my heart. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much. And remember, afterwards, friends and family will have official pictures, too. And next is our friend Maureen Dickey. Turn to the photographer, Mark. It is a great honor to introduce Maureen, a shining example of dedication and compassion in our community. Described by the former director of the Council on Aging, Mary Parcher, as having an open heart for all, Maureen's commitment to nursing and volunteerism extends far beyond a mere profession. It is a deeply personal mission. For over 15 years, Maureen has devoted approximately 3,120 hours to our community. Inspired by Sally, a, a fellow nurse, Maureen embraced the importance of promoting self-care and educated blood pressure clinic attendees about maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Her approachable nature and unwavering encouragement have made her a trusted resource. Maureen's impact extends beyond the clinic. As a dedicated Medical Reserve Corps volunteer, she has participated in numerous initiatives from flu clinics to the Boston Marathon Evacuation Center and the National Drug Take Back Days. Her commitment to inclusivity is evident in her work with various cultural and religious organizations contributing to positive health outcomes for thousands of Framingham residents. <clears throat> it feels good to help people, as she reflected on her gratitude for this nomination and her love for every moment spent volunteering. She encourages us all to volunteer, highlighting the profound happiness it brings and the meaningful impact on our community. Please join me in celebrating Maureen. Maureen, we invite you up to say a few words. Well, obviously I'm not prepared, <laughs> as my, the two predecessors. But I want to thank, first off, the Council on Aging, the Callahan Center, and Lisa and Roberta, who nominated me. I am so honored to be nominated. I, God put me in the right place when he chose nursing for me. It, I was a career of over 60 years. I still have my license, and I will have it until I die. Um, I loved nursing, and as an emergency room nurse, you needed to be able to accept anybody. Diversity, socioeconomic, anything. I was over 30 years in an emergency room. I worked at MIT for nine years, and there you saw so many different people. And, it was just such a joy because I loved, if people needed to be taught, I loved teaching. I knew when I retired that I really wanted to volunteer. It was something I couldn't do. I didn't have time when I was working. But my volunteering, I mean, took me to the Bay Path. I, they have a, the AARP has a program that helps people who got themselves into severe severe financial difficulty. And it was a program to help these people settle out their debts. 
And I worked on that for over five years with one person. And she is now a really good friend and she's totally independent, which is to me the most wonderful thing. Everybody I met at the blood pressure clinic, and I will tell you, when I first started, Irene was there and we might have seen probably maybe about 18 people if we even saw that. But as the time grew and Sally, came, Sally was there and then Marie came on, we have up to 25 to 30 people. The only reason I retired in January was because I had some physical issues that were going to keep me out of the blood pressure clinic for a long time. And it wasn't fair to try to find a replacement. But I am so, so grateful for this honor. And until I die, I would love to keep teaching and embracing people of all socioeconomic, cultural, whatever they need. I am here for them. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Do we get the citations yes. an hour later? <laughs> so um, thank you, everybody, who made all of this possible. Thank you, Kathy. Um, congratulations to all of the award recipients. Um, most people don't know this, but my first career was in healthcare. I worked as a medical technologist in hospitals for the first five years of my career. So I have great, great support and empathy from people like you for all the work you've done in you. the nursing profession and the healthcare profession. So congratulations, and we have um, the citation from the House. And do you want to do the citation from the Senate? Yeah. <laughs> and go up so he can take it. OK. So thank you. Thank you. Dennis, you thank you. Sing? Thank you so thank much. You. So. Thanks so much. And last but not least, may I welcome Judy Grove up to the podium. Bob, uh, team member Bob Evelyn will be introducing. It was moved. <laughs> hmm. Judy. Good afternoon. My name is again is Bob Evelyn and I'm a member of the Framingham Senior Heroes Award team. Can you hear me? Okay. It is actually my honor and privilege to introduce our awardee in the area of public service, Mrs. Judith A. Grove. In the time that we live in, many parents are choosing their newborn's middle name by what their intentions are for their plans for that new baby. If that were the case, when Judith was born, her parents would have named her Judith Fairness Fighting Injustice Grove. <laughs> I'm sure that you would agree that Judith has been one of the most passionate individuals in the city of Framingham, particularly in the area of diversity and inclusivity. Judith has made an estimable contribution to the community from the first time she set foot in Framingham. Judith's hard work for the development of the first, the very first skate park at Farm Pond has provided Framingham youth with the opportunity not only as to be athletes, but form friendships with all kids from all socioeconomic groups. Her advocacy and tireless commitment in the area of environment, 
of environmental pollution has led directly to the remediation for the Mary Denison Park. I had the honor of interviewing Judy for this award. And when I finished with the interview, all I wanted to do was go out and do something and help somebody. <laughs> Without further ado, please join me in congratulating our award winner for excellence in public service, Mrs. Judith A. Grove. <laughs> Actually, I hadn't planned to say much of anything, but as I listened to the other award winners, a lot of thoughts came to mind. I will give a little bit of my background, which I think is interesting. I grew up in Melrose, a beautiful little town, four square miles, with not one person of diversity. I did not meet anyone with diversity until college, and then that was rare. So I was a Catholic schoolgirl, 12 years, and a person I worked for suggested I apply to Harvard. No one in my family had gone to college. I got in, and the sisters tried to convince me to go to Emmanuel instead because they said I had to choose between my faith and my soul. <laughs> and it, they finally came around, and I went, I went to Harvard. And my experience there had an effect on me in that I got to see how the privilege lived. I had a roommate who flew us to New York because her family, they were related to the Ashkenazis, there was a concert in her home. She would fly off to Switzerland, she'd be late for the next term because she was skiing. I had, I was a biology major, I wanted to be a marine biologist. Women were not allowed on the oceanographic vessels, so that was my first experience. I was actually considered a minority student because I was a girl. I was from a family that hadn't gone to college. So that was their idea of diversity back then. So my, my college friends, one of them borrowed notes from me for my biology class. That was my, my field. He wouldn't give them back to me. And when I asked him, we were taking an exam, he said he needed them more than me because he was going to medical school, school and I wasn't. So I got to see a lot of what's going on today in our country. I got to see that privilege that they would do to succeed. They would do to have wealth. Um, and then I married my husband, Tom, where he was at Harvard as well. And I got a master's degree in teaching, but we moved all over. Tom was an English professor. It was hard to get tenure in those days. But we went to Berkeley, California. I went from Cambridge to Berkeley. We were war <laughs> protesters. I had here down to my waist. Tom had red hair out to here and the beard. <laughs> we were on marches with our son. And there was also an ecology movement. I want to thank Larry Stude for what he does for Framingham. Larry spends all his time on it, and I haven't been as involved as I used to be. But we were talking back then about climate, and that was in 1967. So then Tom got a job in Duluth, Minnesota. We moved there was freezing. He took a, a fellowship to Iceland. We had a son born in Iceland. We went back to Minnesota. And when I got there, I had a friend who was a foster parent. And she said to me, we really need parents, we need people to take these kids. I had seven different girls over those years, from babies to adults, and I saw abuse. I had to take these little girls, three and one, to visit their father at the social service office, and they were so afraid of him. So I wrote court reports. I supported the mothers, and I, I tried to get people to understand that you had to either get these kids adopted or fix these families, but you couldn't move them around in foster care continually. But then we had to move again. We moved to Virginia. I did United Way there, but it was a very much of a white community with nothing much going on. And finally, we moved back here to Framingham. The wonderful thing was I became a town meeting member. And boy, was that an education. Many of the people in this room I know because of town meeting. But what was most special was I met Herb Chasen. Herb was starting Hoops and Homework. 
and he asked me to go down to the environmental justice neighborhood. I lived a mile from there, but I'd never been there. I lived below the, right below the train. I went over there, and with Herb, we interviewed the kids. I said to them, what do you do in the summertime? And they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, what do you do for recreation? Oh, they said, we, we're on our phones, or we watch television. I said, why don't you go to the park? They said, what park? They lived on Beaver Street. They lived in those apartments. I said, the one on Beaver Street, Mary Dennison. They said, the park has a name? So I went around Framingham and I looked at all the parks. They had beautiful signs. They had free amenity. But Mary Dennison had three baseball fields and two baby swings on a slide. I started a petition. Herb was a big help and my friend, George Lewis. And we finally went to town meeting with it. Herb had the idea that we would do five different projects. I was giving one of them. When I got up to speak, people yelled at us. Somebody said, if you want a garden, you better tell those children, you better put a fence or they'll steal the tomatoes. You better not bother. Give them a broom, teach them how to work. So I have to, having presented my walk to my seat, and a man stopped me. I wanted a basketball court in the neighborhood. He said to me, how would you like one in your yard? And I said, you come tomorrow. I live at 119 Cedar Street. And that was it. It made me angry. I have a lot of emotions. I'm very emotional, but I'm also get very angry, especially about justice issues. So that was the beginning of my work on Mary Dennison's 600 petitions. Then I found out the kids wanted a skate park. The kids had actually raised $15,000 for a skate park 10 years earlier, and it didn't get built. So I researched it. It didn't get built. Town meeting turned it down. They were given a piece of land behind Loring Arena, tennis courts, but they were taken from them. So I met with the kids. We went to a parks meeting. They were told they couldn't speak. They were adults now. They were 22 years old. One of them had been 12. So we, we worked it through, and eventually we suggested it be a farm pond because Mary Dennison by now was recognized as polluted. So the day it was built at Farm Pond, James was there. He was the original original skateboarder. Someone said to me, why do you do volunteer work? And first they said, because it makes you happy. But then I realized it isn't happiness, it's joy. Joy is far deeper than happiness. You can be happy because you won a lottery. You can be happy because you had a good meal. But you have joy when you help others. Joy has to be you seeing what your strengths are and then using your strengths to help others. And so my joy spot is, near, is the skate park. I can go there any day. The kids are grown now. They're gone. James is in New York. But his name is on the plaque. And his mother was there that day. And she told me that her father had been a worker, a laborer, and creating Cushing Park. So then Mary Dennison. It's been years. And Finally, we had the groundbreaking. But my thinking on this all, finally, when I was asked by Axis Framingham, what's next? What's next, I think, is that people recognize what Framingham has done. Framingham is unique. We are, are surrounded by these wealthy, privileged communities. We're looked down on by many people. Oh, you live in Framingham. But we have wonderful schools with the work that Cynthia does. We have inclusion in our city. We have housing. We have transportation. We have wonderful parks all over the city. And I believe Mary Dennison will be one of the best parks in the region. Not only is Mary Dennison going to be remediated, it is going to cost a lot of money. It was polluted by Dennison Corporation. Ginger Esty was my model. She was the one who was at all the environmental meetings. She knew the background. I didn't know anything. She was there for our meetings. And when we had anyone who came who was not in our neighborhood, we felt really fortunate, and that was Ginger. She, she had done so much with the, being on the Board of Selectmen, every kind of position, but she was at those environmental meetings. How do you clean up this pollution? What can you possibly do to fix it? Well, they hired an environmental lawyer. 
And she went after Denison Corporation. She actually went to Harvard Business School and got books that were written by the Denisons. And they showed the chemicals that were used. And that's how they proved. And you'll remember the day at Woodrow Wilson School, kids got up and said, we're worried. We played here all our lives. And they said, don't worry, dear. Just don't eat the dirt, the person said to her. So when, so they got the remediation, but then they found out it was going to cost even more than they thought. The remediation of Neary Denison Park, Denison's going to pay $18 million for it. And the city is going to do the infrastructure under it, and then the park, which had three baseball fields and two swings, is going to have two fields. It's going to have volleyball, a mini skate park, exercise for adults, a spray park, picnic tables. I went to a meeting and said, how come there's no picnic tables at Mary Denison? The response was, people would congregate. Why are there no soccer nets? Nets could fall over and trap children, they said. I said, why are there no swings? There's baseballs that could get hit by the baseballs. So now Mary Tennyson is going to be the best park in the region. It's, it's going to be a place, my son lives in New York City, and I talked about families will come and have their parties there. They'll have the reunions there. There'll be a real bathroom with attendants. And it's within walking distance, 10 minutes walk of 10,000 people. It's in the best location. It's right on the border with Native. But finally, for access, I said, what I want to see next is I want to see Framingham recognized for what we have done for our senior center, for our parks. We have, we have a hockey rink. We have 4th of July was incredible last year. We have great volunteers, and, and this room is full of them. I think probably everybody in this room is a volunteer for, for something in our city. So I, I think that in terms of what happened to me, that the disappointment, I didn't, I didn't become a teacher of the way I thought I had a master's. I actually worked in ophthalmology for 20 years and trained techs and worked in the operating room. But I wanted to be a lawyer. And I, I realized with children, I didn't have, get that opportunity, but the one last thing I'll talk about is I sued the ZBA because they wanted to put a tow yard on Leland Street. I filed a case in land court. And I knocked on doors. And I have to recognize my friend Rhonda Andrews, who nominated me. Rhonda and I were involved with General Chemical. That was in the very beginning. She was in it before I was. They were pouring chemicals into our ground. And that's being cleaned up now. And there's, <laughs> there are other things. But right now, I'm serving on a very peaceful committee, community <laughs> preservation. We have money to spend. People come and ask us for money, and we give it to them. It's a lot of fun. So let's get some recognition for Framingham from our representatives that we are a great community, and we're a model for other people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> come on down. We still have citations. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> so I just wanted to say a few words for um, this recipient, who is my constituent. I first became involved a little, okay, you guys can hear me, right? I'm now afraid to touch it. Um, oh, I think I broke it. Um, Parf, of course. But a few, uh, a, a little over a decade ago, um, when I first started uh, as somebody in their 20s paying attention, um, as somebody who had grown, grow, grown up by the Mary Denison neighborhood um, and had known passively about the contamination and how, well, nobody's going to do anything for us because we're the people that don't speak English. Um, I had heard that throughout the process of building a skate park that there was this tough as nails advocate who was speaking up for all the things that we thought on the inside that we didn't feel like anybody was hearing, including a skate park, which extreme sports advocate for open space and all these radical ideas. And I'm like, who is the social justice warrior who is absolutely like revolutionizing Framingham? And somebody said, Judy Grove. I'm like, cool. Can somebody point that out, point her out to me? And I'm expecting to see this like absolutely rebellious, um, not that, not this adorable <laughs> little, <laughs> looks like a doll, very, very sweet, 
quickly found out that um, a Appearances are very much deceiving because this Judy is one of the toughest people that I have ever had the privilege to meet. I am honored to represent her as her state representative. I'm honored to serve in a community where she has done so much, where she still advocates, where she encourages people to get involved, and where Framingham, I can say, will never be the same because we are privileged to have a Judy Grove in our community. Thank you all so much. Can you hear me? Um, I did want to mention, I see a couple of other city councilors in the room and um, advocates for these wonderful uh, honorees. So if you want to stand up, I need to see Leslie and is Adam here? I thought I saw him. And, and yes, stand up. Stand up. If you can, Bill. Thank you. And um, I also see Jesse and downtown Framingham. Jesse Edwards. Our diversity. So, anyway, thank you so much. I want you honorees to get ready with your fan club, family and fan, and come over and get your picture taken, official picture taken. In the meantime, all of you are welcome to go down where Terry is in the back. And um, we have refreshments, thanks to the Friends of Callahan. I don't know whether the Friends of Callahan President Mary McGill wants to say something, but um, if she could come up for a second while we're, while we're getting ready. And if Randy has anything else to say in the meantime. Take your time. Yes. Mary's having her surgery next week, so we wish her well. Thank you all for coming. I am so taken back by all our heroes that my heart is just full of, I want to give more now. <laughs> and I think we all feel the same. Well, what a great group of heroes this year. And it just keeps getting better and better every year. And we as the friends, every time Kathy comes to us, <laughs> we do always try and support this program, which I love dearly. And uh, thank you all for coming. and. Thank you to our heroes. You are so special. And I'm so glad I got to know all of you so much better. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Hi, everyone. We just wanted to uh, say in a final note here, um, you can see how touching this ceremony is and how special it is here uh, at the Callahan Center. Uh, today is all about Carol, Maureen, Cynthia, and Judy. I want to really say, really put the focus on them as we have today to continue that. They deserve it. So let's give them a nice round of applause once again. You know, it's amazing this community uh, in Framingham and Judy had a very nice comment. She said, Framingham is different. 
And it is different. And I'm learning that over the many years of being here, how different it is. Um, when for me to go into this job, I got my interview and they ask you in the city of Framingham a typical diversity question. What does diversity mean to you? And they ask that to all the people. And typically you hear something in the way of having been the person doing the interview, they'll say, well, it's, it just means a lot to get everybody's opinion, to let them consider them, hear their voice. And it's sort of a similar answer. So I tried to think of something a little different. And I thought, well, look at me. Are people looking at diversity when they see me? And most people would probably see no when they look at me. But in the world of counsel and agings, on senior centers, I'm in the 4%. They're only 4% men, and they're 96% women. So when I mentioned that to the interviewers, I said, you know, I'm actually, I know what it's like to be those women who might be engineers or in a field where they're very few. I said, I know what it's like to be the 4%. So I absolutely take their cause to heart. And I know what it's like uh, to be in the small group. And because what Judy said is Framingham is different, they took a chance on me. And they said, yeah, let's, let's, let's go with the guy. Um, we're not going to go with the traditional woman in this role, and we're going to go with someone a little bit different. And for that, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. So when we look around this room, we see people that we at first may not look like they represent diversity, um, have nothing to do with diversity. Take another look at them because actually they do. So I want to say to everyone here today, thank you so much for coming to recognize our award recipients. Uh, they are very deserving. Uh, I hear their backgrounds that I want to run out and do something, and which is wonderful. So thank you to everybody here today for coming. It's been a wonderful event. Uh, compliments of the Friends of Callahan. We do have desserts and refreshments in the back for you as well. So please enjoy it today. Enjoy the company um, amongst all of each other today. Thank you so much for coming to the Framium Senior Heroes Award. Thank you.